What's up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets and we do it in English and Spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language. And in this video and as I do it Mondays through Thursdays I want to make a quick stock market update so I want to break down some technicals going over S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 but also breaking down three stocks that tomorrow are going to be on the very top of my personal watch list. So with that further ado, let's get right into the video and surprise, surprise guys, today we had a turnaround Wednesday, if that exists, turnaround Wednesday, because yesterday the S&P 500 closed the trading session in negative territory, so it looks like the turnaround day was pushed back until today. So the Russell 2000 went up 1.48%, Nasdaq went up 1.02%, Dow Jones up 1%, and the S&P 500 went up 0.95%. And obviously, guys, a few minutes ago, we had the chairman of the Federal Reserve talking about interest rates, talking about tapering, and talking about the economy in general terms. As I told you in the video that we posted yesterday, uh, we weren't going to hear about anything concrete about the interest rate of the US, which pretty, which pretty much remains in negative territory. However, the Federal Reserve stated that we will see a hike in interest rates once we see full employment. When are we going to see full employment? That's anyone's guess. What are we talking about here, 2022? 2023, wait and know. Something very positive, and for those who are investing at a long term, because if you are a bear and you are shutting the markets and you are not uh, in any long term position, then you don't care about whatever happens with the markets. But for those who are investing at a long term, for those who are thinking about locking in profits in long term positions in 2025 or 2030, then the Federal Reserve is saying, is stating that according to them, the inflation rate is going to remain low. So the inflation rate that the Federal Reserve is seeing five years out is 2%, guys. So that obviously is very good news for those who are investing at a long term, such as me. And the, Fed, the chairman of the Federal Reserve also talked about Evergrande. He said that he doesn't see any risk uh, over the economy of the U.S. because of the possible default situation of this real estate company in China. And he also pointed out that as of now, we have very low default rates in the U.S. So that's pretty much, that's in a nutshell, the most important that was said by the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And on top of that, guys, the Federal Reserve, and I was... Almost about a, uh, I was almost forgetting about telling you guys this. So they are saying they they just let us know today ahead of time that we are going to see the beginning of of the tapering process sooner rather than later. I told you in the video that we posted yesterday that I think that the tapering process is going to kick off in November. So now I am more convinced than ever before that 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 the process of tapering is going to begin in either November or December the latest. So, the I mean, the Federal Reserve is saying what they have been saying that they were going to do. They were going to let us know well ahead of time before starting the tapering process. So, the chairman of the Federal Reserve didn't say anything that could have scared the market. So, Take a look at these guys. These, these are the 11 sectors that trade inside the S&P 500. So nine out of 11 sectors closed today's trading session in positive territory. And take a look at what was the worst performing sector today, guys. Utilities. I have told you plenty of times here on the channel that the utility sector is a defensive sector. So whenever there is uncertainty in the markets, probably, or we are very likely to see, the utilities sector outperform the other sectors inside the S&P 500. So I think that the fact that the Federal Reserve is providing certainty to the markets, at least 
when it comes to the beginning of the tapering process because it is going to start sooner rather than later so they are providing certainty and that's why the let's say the the, the big money of wall street was eager today to take a chance on let's say uh, riskier uh, sectors inside the s p so the best performing sector today was the energy sector which went up today a lot guys 3.08 percent but mind you guys at some point today the energy sector was up more than four percent however once the press conference of Jerome Powell kicked off the US dollar shut up and that's and that's the reason why we saw we saw a sizable drop in the energy sector the financial sector went up 1.62 percent and the tech sector went up 1.38 percent so we had a strong rally today guys mainly because uh, two because the the two most important sectors inside the s p 500 went up more than one percent so is a bottom in in this uh, corrective process uh, se semi corrective process that we are seeing as of now in the markets who knows guys and before going over the s p 500 i want to show you a couple of trades that i closed in today's trading session and i also want to show you a trade that i opened today the first trade that i closed today and, and i closed this trade guys and i obviously obviously ended up leaving money on the table but i closed this trade just to play it safe because we were waiting for the Federal Reserve today, was on Apple. So on September 20th, I purchased 100 shares at $142.30, paying $4,229, and I ended up selling out of these 100 shares today at $145.03, and I was paid $14,503. I ended up making over here something like 270 bucks. And another trade that I closed today, and this is a back hold that I got rid of, was Uber, guys. And I really wanted to hold the shares of Uber that I had, guys, for longer. But this stock got absolutely overbought. The relative strength index of Uber got on the foot hours shared up to, I don't know, it was something, something crazy. 95 or 98, 92 points. And I was like, okay. I need to lock in the profit and, and maybe if we happen to see a pullback, I can re-enter into this position. So on July 29, I purchased 100 shares at $44.10 and I sold out of those 100 shares today at $46.12. So I paid $4,409 and I was paid this morning 4000 or or a few hours ago $4612 ended up making over here $200 so between these two trades I ended up closing today's trading session with almost a 500 buck profit and a new position that I opened today was on DraftKings guys if you remember in yesterday's video I broke down DraftKings from a technical standpoint and I told you Watch out for DraftKings paying a visit down to $51. That was my entry price. That, that's the price that I was looking for in order to start a position on DraftKings. However, guys, last night I was taking a deep dive into this possible deal between DraftKings and what's the name of the Entain? That's the name of the British company that DraftKings wants to buy. And I found some, I found something interesting. So I made a few calls. I have some friends living in Euro because I don't know anything about this company, Entain. And it turns out to be that this company is the number one online gambling company in a lot of countries in Europe. So that's interesting. That implies that DraftKings is trying to aim at the European markets. And, and as of now, obviously, DraftKings has no presence at all in Europe. And that's a huge market. So that's very positive. So I was like, OK, I, I think that DraftKings is doing the right thing over here. I want to start a small position. So my idea would be building up a 300 share position over here. So I started this position today, purchasing 50 shares 
at $52.77. And as of now, I have an unrealized loss of $7. So the positive aspect of the deal that the DraftKings wants to cut with this company Enten is that this is a very well-positioned company in Europe. However, Enten already has a partnership with MGM and or uh, therefore for any potential deal uh, to be able to go through then MGM is going to have to approve that deal. It is going to require an agreement with MGM. And on top of that, guys, uh, the, the deal that the DraftKings is proposing to this company, Entain, consists of $18 million worth of DraftKings shares and $2 billion in cash. This is a stock and cash offering. What, uh, a stock and cash offer, sorry. What DraftKings is offering to this company. So, I was taking a look at the cash and cash equivalents of DraftKings and as of... Uh, as of Q3 of this year, the cash and cash equivalent position of DraftKings is $2.6 billion. So if DraftKings is going to put $2 billion on the table in order to close this deal, that implies that DraftKings is going to have to withdraw out of its cash and cash equivalent position $2 billion. That is going to imply that uh, from a cash and cash equivalent position, DraftKings is going to take, or the cash and cash equivalent situation of DraftKings is going to take an important hit. However, maybe DraftKings can get a loan in order to pay those $2 billion, or maybe DraftKings could uh, carry out a public offering in order to raise $2 billion so they can pay uh, that money to this company ending. If DraftKings obviously happens to carry out a public offering that is going to affect DraftKings to the downside in the short term. Something else that I told you guys yesterday is that supposedly the market, the, the market capitalization of this company ending is $18 billion. And obviously, since DraftKings wants to uh, cut this deal, they are offering $2 billion additional dollars in order to, let's say, uh, attempt this company to accept the deals. And uh, something else that uh, caught my eye is that the market capitalization of DraftKings as of now is worth $40 billion. And this is a $20 billion. So this is a, this is a big deal for, that, for DraftKings, guys. We are talking about a deal that equals half the market capitalization of DraftKings. So this swing position that I, that I opened today implies certain risks However, I think that if that if this deal happens to go through and since DraftKings is going to have a big exposure to the European market, this is going to be very, but very beneficial for DraftKings. So that's why I purchased 50 shares today and I am going to be adding uh, 50 shares here and there until I can build up. Uh, I can finish building up this position up to 300 shares. And now let's go. I think that I already told you guys everything about this deal between DraftKings and Entain. Let, let me see. I have some notes over here. I think that that's it. I think that that's everything I wanted to tell you. So And, and, and mind you guys, full disclosure, I am a DraftKings bull. Absolutely, 100%. So I just needed to, you know, take a deep dive into the details of this deal. And this morning I was like, you know what? I am going to start a position on DraftKings. Okay, S&P 500. So it went up today 0.95% and it closed today's trading session at $4,395. So I am going to zoom in here on the four hour chart. And guys, take a look at the spot in which the bulls of the S&P were rejected in today's trading session, none other than the 180 SMA on the 4 hour shirt at 44.12. So we can make the case that that's bearish. Additionally, the fact that the bulls couldn't close today's trading session above 4,400 because we closed at 4,395 points, that could also be, or we can say, we can make the case that that's also bearish. However, take a look at the relative strength index of the S&P, it is at 42 points. So we have two possible scenarios in front of us. Remember, and I told you in the video that we posted yesterday, 
Watch out for the bulls of the S&P bursting above 4,400 and starting to trade sideways or trading sideways rather for one or two trading sessions because in that case, the relative strength index of the S&P is going to go higher. We can see, we could be potentially seeing the RSI of the S&P 500 at 45 or 50 points. And that could represent a massive bull trap, guys. Because yesterday and the day before yesterday, this index was extremely oversold. And therefore, we didn't have much room to the downside. However, if the bulls started to trade sideways, as I just said, slightly above 4,400, then that might be a possibility for the bears of the S&P 500 to bring the S&P 500 lower and maybe breaking to the downside 4,300. Because if the relative strength index of the S&P, as I just said, is between uh, 45 or 50 points, then maybe that uh, would give the bears a first chance of trying to make a very important push lower in the case of the S&P 500. However, on the flip side, if tomorrow or if in the course of the next trading sessions, the bulls start to consolidate slightly above 4,400, that would be a sign that they are trying to gather momentum in order to make a push higher and maybe pay a visit to the next important area of overhead resistance at 4440. 4440 is a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for the S&P back on August 16. It also did it back on August 12th, but we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the S&P failed on two occasions back in the beginning of August. So that's the most important area of overhead resistance that the bulls of the S&P are going to have to deal with. Once they have been able to take on 4440, as I just said, then obviously the next important area of overhead resistance is going to be 4470. 4470 is a previous all-time high that also acted as lower support on two occasions. So I think that uh, this area, guys, of 4400 is going to be very, but very important in order to pick a direction in the next uh, trading sessions. And I don't know, anything can happen here, guys, for real. I wouldn't be surprised if we happen to see an important leg down since the relative strength index of the S&P is recovering a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if the price action that we saw today is a massive bull trap. And I wouldn't be surprised either, guys, if the bottom of this um, sizable pullback that we have seen in the last few days is in and we start to go higher. So anything can happen in the case of the S&P 500. And in the case of the NASDAQ 100, this index looks a bit better. I'm going to zoom in here on the four hour chart and the NDX went up today almost 1%, 0.99%. And it closed today's trading session above 15,150 points, which I have told you is a massive, it's a very, but very important area from a technical standpoint. So the NDX closed today at 15,176 points. Keep in mind, guys, that 150 points is a previous area of support that already acted as such for the NDX back on August 23rd. But we are also talking, guys, about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the NDX already felt on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten occasions before. And mind you, the bulls managed to close today. They managed to close today's trading session above the 180 SMA on the four hour chart, and they also closed above 150 points. So let's say that the, the face of the NASDAQ 100 changed today and it is starting to look bullish once again. So the bears need to break 15,150 points to the downside tomorrow. That is going to be imperative for the bears of the NDX. And in the case of the bulls, the most important task 
would be taking on the next important area of overhead resistance at 15,264 points. The relative strength index of the NDX is at 42 points, so we can make the case that this index is neither oversold nor overbought. So I don't know, guys. The Nasdaq 100 is starting to look bullish, whereas I think that anything can happen in the case of the S&P 500. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the first stock of this video, FedEx. And take a look at FedEx, guys. Jeez, the stock of this company got absolutely destroyed today, going down 9.12% and closing today's trading session at $229.08. And what was the reason for this huge, for this massive drop in the case of FedEx earnings, guy? This is an earnings related drop. So let me pull up here the live news tab. And I think, and if I happen to remember correctly, that FedEx, um, they missed on EPS, but I think that they beat on revenue. However, they lowered guidance and that's the reason why we saw this massive drop in the stock of this company. So let me see if I can find here the details. So EPS came in at $4.37, missing the five back estimate, and sales came in at $22 billion, beating the $21.9 billion estimate. However, the problem was the guidance. So when it comes to guidance, they lowered the earnings per share guidance, which was initially estimate at $18.25 to $19.50 compared to the prior forecast of $18.90 to $19.90 per diluted share. So they lowered the guidance, they missed on EPS, and that's why, guys, we are seeing this big drop in the case of FedEx. So if we take a look at the four hour chart, we cannot see any previous area of support and this chart. So we need to pull up guys. And this is something that I have done recently only in the case of Baba guys, we need to pull up the three year chart. So $228 is a price that I am going to keep a, I am, I am going to be keeping a close watch on because $228 is a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for FedEx back on September of last year. So we have, uh, we can see and the three year chart, a previous area of lower support that should act now as lower support. And needless to say, guys, we can actually see FedEx as of now in an oversold condition on the three year chart. So I guess that the RSI and the four hour chart must be even lower. Yeah, effectively. So the stock of this company is severely oversold, guys. So the relative strength index of FedEx and the four hour chart is at 15 points. We should see a relief rally sooner rather than later. So I am going to keep a close watch on tomorrow, guys, on FedEx. Now that today the dust settled a bit. So I want to keep a close watch on the stock of this company somewhere between $228 and $229. I think, and as I just said, that the stock of this company is absolutely due for a relief rally. So if I happen to pick up some shares at, let's say, $229, then my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance for FedEx at $245. $245 is a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for FedEx back on March 5th, and it also did it back on February 24th. So if we were able to take this trade the way that I am describing it, picking up some shares of FedEx near $229, $229.50, and selling out of those shares at $244-ish, we could be making a 6% profit. So watch out for FedEx tomorrow, guys. Starting to consolidate somewhere between $228 and $229. And the third stock of this video, it's going to be Nordstrom. And in the case of Nordstrom, 
The stock of this company went up today 2.81%. That is starting to recover. And it closed today's trading session at $28.49. As of now, I own 150 shares of Nordstrom at an average cost of... Let me see if I can pull up here my position in Nordstrom. So this would be JWN. So I own 150 shares of the stock of this company at an average cost of $29.34. And as of now, I have an unrealized loss of $176, but I couldn't care less about this unrealized loss. So from a technical standpoint, guys, Nordstrom managed to close Today's trading session is slightly above a very important area of overhead resistance near $28.20. $28.20 is an area of overhead resistance in which the stock of this company fell back on September 16 and it also fell back on September 2nd. So we are talking about a former area of overhead of overhead resistance, sorry guys, that was broken to the upside and that now is supposed to act as a new support. And if we take a look at the relative strength index of JWN, it is at 57 points, guys. So we can make the case that the stock of this company is at a very healthy spot in technical terms. Is the stock of this company is neither oversold nor overbought. So the next gap for the bulls of Nordstrom is going to be $31. I think that the stock of this company could make this push to the upside at any moment, guys, for real, because the relative strength index is at 57 points, as I just said, very, but very healthy. So watch out tomorrow for Nordstrom, guys, because if the stock of this company starts to consolidate, as I just said, slightly above uh, the previous area of overhead resistance at $28.20, so let's say that Nordstrom starts to close hourly somewhere between $28.50, $28.60, then that's Bison, guys, no doubt about it. So picking up shares of Nordstrom at $28.70 each and selling out of those shares at $30.78, we are talking about a trade that could leave a 6% profit, a very nice profit. In my case, and as I just said, and since I am not worried at all about the position that I just showed you, my price target, guys, is going to be a more ambitious price target at $34. If I happen to close this trade the way that I am describing it, and since I own shares of Nordstrom near $29.30 each, and if I sell out of those shares at $34, I could be making a 13% profit, nothing to sneeze at. And why $34? Well, because $34, guys, is a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of Nordstrom felt back on July 20th. But we are also talking about a former area of lower support that really acted as such for the stock of this company on one, two, three, and four occasions during the most recent months. So watch out for Nordstrom, guys. It looks like the stock of this company is starting to reverse this horrible downtrend. And I truly believe, guys, that if JWN starts to consolidate slightly above $28.20, it is going to be off to the races sooner rather than later. And the last stock of this video is going to be Meta Material sticker symbol MMAT. And in the case of this meme stock, it went up today 5.34% and it closed today's trading session at $5.13. So I am going to zoom in here on the 4-hour chart. And guys, the stock of this company is starting to consolidate slightly above this 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart. And at the same time, it is starting to consolidate slightly above a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for the stock of this company back on September 9. But we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of M8 failed back in late April. So the stock of this company is starting to look very, but very attractive from where I sit. And take a look at the relative strength index of Meta Materials. It is at 55 points. So guys, come on. 
the stock of this company looks extremely bad, extremely interesting. If tomorrow, and this is going to be the stock that is going to be on the very top of my personal watch list. If tomorrow I happen to see Meta Materials keep on consolidating slightly above this 50 SMA on the 4 hour chart and slightly above at the same time the previous area of support and resistance that I just told you near $5. So let's say that Meta Materials starts to close hourly at $5.25, $5.30. I am going to be picking up 300 or 400 shares of Meta Materials because that would be signaling that the bulls of the stock of this company are gathering momentum in order to make a push higher and maybe pay a visit to the next important area of overhead resistance for AMAT at $6.52, which happens to be a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the stock of this company failed back on September 3rd. So this would be a quick trade that would leave us a very nice profit, guys. So picking up, as I just said, 300 or 400 shares at $5.37, and selling out of those shares at $6.46, we are talking about a 16, oh no, no, 17% profit. If I take this trade, guys, that's it. I am done for the week. So watch out for Meta Materials tomorrow. Keep on consolidating slightly above five dollars and ten cents each and with meta materials i am going to wrap up the video thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again remember and keep in mind guys that here on the bilingual stock market channel we are posting a stock market update videos mondays through thursdays three or four hours after the market closes so if you want to get all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner you have to be subscribed to the channel but you also need to act Activate the notification bell right up there. Follow us on Instagram as well, guys, at Bilingual Stock Market. And remember that this is the Bilingual Stock Market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the markets, but we do it in English and Spanish as well. So you can pick your preferred language. But most importantly, this is the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro, and I will see you guys once again three or four hours tomorrow, once again, three or four hours after the market closes. Peace out.